Hey, what's up everyone? Jason Turley here, back with another video. Today we're on PicoCTF.org, which is a beginner-friendly capture the flag website, and we'll be looking at the No Way Out Challenge in the PicoCTF 2023 Reverse Engineering category. The description for this challenge simply reads, put this flag in standard PicoCTF format before submitting. The flag was uh, this right here. So this is elite speak. So a mix of numbers and letters for hi, I'm the flag. Submit it in the standard format of just Pico CTF and then wrap the actual flag in curly braces. And that's really it as far as the description goes. We have two links here to download the Windows game and one for the Mac game. There's no hints, um, no detailed description. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm gonna download this Windows binary here I already have it installed and compressed there. So let me exit out of this, go to my desktop. All right, double click on the folder. Let's make that nice and big. And we see a couple of folders and files and binaries here. So Mono Bleeding Edge. Mono is a compiler for Unity games. Unity is a game engine. So it's a way to create games in a programming language called C Sharp. Another very popular one is called Unreal Engine, which uses C++ to create, to create games. So we can poke around here, all right? We see all this stuff, but let's just get started with the actual game, right? We see here, this is the application. This is something for like managing crashes if the game um, crashes or freezes on us, I guess. But let's open this up. So double click there and there it pops up here. All right, we're in the game. It says escape to find the flag. And we have our character here. They're holding a crowbar for some reason. And we can just wander around. WASD are the arrow keys. Right, let's see. Okay, can I break these things? No. Um, I can jump. I need to find some way to escape. If we hit the escape key down here, it pops up the control menu. So we can sprint with shift, uh, crouch, I guess, with control. All right, so pretty minimalistic. We want to somehow get outside of these walls. Uh, can our crowbar help us? Our walk speed is pretty slow. Um, this is me running, that's also slow. I can use the mouse wheel to change my weapon. So it's a katana, a shovel, an ax. A hammer. I'm clicking. I'm pressing spacebar. I, I can't do anything. I can't break anything. All right, climb this ladder. Come on. Okay, so there's the flag. Can I hop over this wall? No. Okay, I'm back to the crowbar. All right, so I can't hop over this wall. I can't run very fast. I can't jump very high. Um, there's all these little bricks and blocks and but not, but they seem to serve no relevant purpose. I can't bash them, I can't break them. This isn't Minecraft, I can't get more resources. So let's exit out of this. Yes, exit. And this is a C-sharp game, so let's poke around here. Managed, all right, hopefully this is large enough for you guys to see. But we have all these DLLs here, all these downloadable, all right, dynamically linked library, that's what DLL means. So this is just extra code, extra resources. Some of it comes pre-built with the Unity game engine, and we see those here, unity.services, unityengine.whatever. But we're but what we're most concerned with is the assembly C sharp DLL. So let's right click there. And we want to open that with okay, it doesn't pop up here. So what we want is a way to edit this code, edit the game. So we saw we couldn't jump very high, we couldn't run very fast. If we have access to this binary, perhaps we can reverse engineer the code and change those values so we can jump higher and maybe just jump over that wall or run faster or maybe teleport ourselves, or have some type of way to uh, strike because we have the hammer and the ax and the crowbar. Maybe we can strike and break down the wall. So we want some type of tool to reverse engineer this binary. The one I'm going to use is called DN Spy, and you can just Google DN Spy. It's a debugger and assembler editor for the .NET framework, which includes C Sharp, which the Unity games are written in. So hopefully that made sense. 
So we come over here. Where do I have Dan Spy installed? All right, open up DN Spy. Oh, I have it here, Tools, DN Spy. There we go. There's a bunch of stuff here. Let's, even though I see it right here, Assembly C Sharp, let's click on File and Close All just to make it nice and neat. Let's start from scratch. File, Open, and we want just this DLL. It's going to pull in some other standard libraries, but that's okay. If I can zoom in here and make that nice and easy for you guys to read, because I know a lot of you guys are on mobile phone. All right, that should be good. So I can click here on this arrow and start expanding these uh, menus, these widgets. And we see different things. We see PE, which is the Windows program um, header, right? On Linux, it's ELF, E-L-F. Whereas on Windows, the equivalent is the PE, and we can get the DOS header and the file header and all this other stuff, but that's not really relevant. If we come down here, we see these two curly braces, all right? One has collider events. So when you're doing any type of game programming and you're bumping into things, or you're interacting with objects, so that is a collision. So perhaps we can look at this stuff we see this value here for a game controller. So we know we're in the right place. We know this is the actual um, game code. We see this evolve games, hands holder, hand smooth, head bob, item change. Okay, so there's different things for the items, the item color, oops. But what do we care about? We want to change our actual player value. So where can we find something like that? How, how, how did all this get here? Here we go, player controller. Let's click on that. And it takes us to the start function. Hopefully that's big enough. So private void start. So I'm assuming this is what, this is all the code that gets run as soon as the player object gets loaded in the game, which is essentially immediately. So this, starts to define the different attributes of the player. So our crawl height, um, if you click on something, it's gonna bring you, I guess, to where it's defined. So, okay, I don't want that. Click here to go back. Ah, here we go. So we see the running value, so the running speed, we see the walking speed. Let's, uh, let's see if we can change that. Running is spelled wrong, just FYI. 4F. So four with the F being float. Okay, so let's do, let's make this bigger. Right click, edit class. There we go, okay. So now we can make this, let's just multiply it times five F for the value of float. Let's multiply this as well. Let's keep scrolling. So this is how we can change our movement speed but maybe there's something for our jump height. Maybe we can just straight up jump over the wall. Oh, here we go. So if input get button, and then we see this hard coded value jump. And some other uh, cases, some other comparisons. So if we can move the character controller, so we're on the ground and we're not climbing, right? This exclamation point right here means not. So essentially, if we're on the ground, we're not jumping, we're not climbing the ladder, um, we're able to jump. So there's this value called jump speed. Let's just multiply that by five as well. Actually, let's, let's make it huge. Let's multiply that by 10. We'll click here, we'll compile, we'll come up here, file, save all. And this is going to ask us where we want to save it. We're just going to overwrite this original assembly C sharp .dll file. If you want to make a backup copy, that's fine. If you want to name this something different, um, it might get kind of wonky because the game is going to look for this exact DLL. So maybe you want to create a backup before you make any changes, but I don't care. So we're going to click OK. We're going to minimize out of this. We're going to come back to our Pico game. Made with Unity, Evolve Games, OK. So we're still here. And now if I walk, you can see this is a lot faster than before, right? We're zooming, we're like Sonic the Hedgehog. Now if I hit the spacebar to jump, look at that. 
It's like there's almost no gravity. Look how high up we jump. And now we're outside the wall. So yeah, that's pretty high, but we can jump super high as well. So if we move near this flag, I guess, it says, welcome to unity. So perhaps that is the answer. That's the riddle. That's the puzzle. So we can come over here. Pico CTF. Welcome to Unity. Bang, bang. Submit. Nice. So that's one way to solve it. That's kind of a silly, kind of goofy. We just increased our um, run value and our walk speed and our jump height to make it super high. But so if we're here, welcome to Unity. That string is probably hard coded into the game somewhere. So it's probably a constant, right? So there's probably some type of collision or some type of event or if statement that's saying, hey, if the player is near the flagpole, print out this, print out this message. So let's see if we can find where that is. Let's see if we can find where that message is. So I'm just expanding, just poking around APTX. I'm not sure what that stands for. But we see this, we see this mysterious value, game object mysterious. Let's click on this. Okay, um, on trigger event collider. So if we collide with this game object, which I'm assuming is that flagpole. So if the player interacts with that, then print out this mysterious thing, this value. So let's see if we can grab this, copy, Let's go here, maybe the player start. Can we just add it here? Right click, edit class. When we're instantiating these values, can we just do it like that? Compile. Player does not contain a definition for mysterious and no accessible. Okay, so we can't do it there. It doesn't like it there. Let's do right click. Can we just create our own method? Create class, let's call this start. Okay. Edit, edit class, I guess. Private, void, start. It's void because it's not gonna return any info. Let's just paste this in. Compile. Compile, okay. Let's uh, close out of this file, save all. Okay. Now let's reopen that game. Pico. So if we did this correctly, as soon as this loads up, it should automatically print out the uh, flag. There we go. Welcome to Unity. So we still have all the other values, like that's still um, set to what it was before. So all we did was we found, where was it? We found this um, function, this method. So whatever mysterious is, we created a method called start. So print this out as soon as the game loads. I try to do it in a different field, but we need it in the aptx, I guess, module. Because these other values are not global. They're not globally recognized. So there you go. You don't really need to know too much about C Sharp, too much about reverse engineering, too much about Unity in order to solve this challenge. So if you're interested in game hacking or um, game cheats, like this is not a bad way to get started. So that's how I did it. I'm sure you guys are much more creative. You can find other ways. You don't have to jump over the wall. Perhaps there's a way you can just um, create some type of code to teleport yourself outside of the wall. So I just made my jump pipe super huge, but you guys can play around with it and do whatever you guys see fit. So there you have it. That's how I solved it. There's two ways. As always, take it easy and see you guys in the next video.